Don't skip the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best false relationships can be hard to identify, just as it's challenging to distinguish a mirage from an oasis in the vast desert of human interaction, in a world full of meetings and mismatches where masks of cordiality and self-interest are skillfully worn discovering. Who truly cares for us is an art that requires not just intuition, but also a sharp E, and sometimes we end up believing too much in the goodness and goodwill of others, when what's really happening is that we're just being used, just like a skilled gardener who knows how to distinguish the plants that nourish from those that suck the nutrients from the soil. We must learn to identify those who in our lives are true allies, but, but we must also recognize those who are emotional parasites. Therefore, we will now talk about subtle signs and less obvious patterns, that reveal the hidden intentions behind forced smiles and empty promises. If you are here, it's because you are interested in personal development. And in this content, we will talk about the wisdom of deciphering these human enigmas, eliminating the path to more authentic and rewarding relationships before we start. I would like to ask you to make sure to watch this video until the end as all the content is important. Be strong. And stay focused. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the music channel number 15 failure. To fulfill promises this act of making and breaking, 15 promises can be likened to a theatrical performance, where words are the actors and actions are the neglected script. These individuals have mastered the art of verbal persuasion painting, vivid pictures of commitment and support. However, their words are often devoid of the substance of action they create expectations with the flourish of a painter. But when the time comes to turn these painted dreams into reality, they falter, revealing the emptiness of their assurances. In such relationships, a pattern emerges when their support is most needed, when their promise is due for delivery. These individuals often vanish, leaving a void filled with disappointment and disillusionment. This absence in times of need is not just a breach of trust, it is a clear indicator of their true motivations. Their promises are tools for manipulation, designed to extract value, trust, or support, with no intention of reciprocation. Failure to fulfill promises, therefore, becomes a litmus test of sorts. It distinguishes between those who value relationships as a two way street of mutual respect and support, and those who see relationships merely as avenues for personal gain for those left in the lurch. The experience often brings a painful but valuable lesson. Not all promises are built on the foundation of, of honesty and integrity. So the failure to fulfill promises is a critical behavior to observe in understanding and identifying individuals who may seek to use others. It is a behavior that speaks louder than the most eloquent of words. Revealing a person's true character and intention and recognizing this pattern one can learn to navigate the complex terrain of human relationships with a more discerning eye, safeguarding their trust and emotional investment. Number 14 Diminishing or 14 Disdainful comments, individuals who habitually use others as stepping stones for their personal gain, are adept at deploying diminutive remarks, is a tool for erosion eroding self-esteem confidence and the sense of self-worth in their targets. These comments sometimes cloaked in the guise of humor or casual banter are, in fact, barbed hooks designed to pull down rather than uplift. They may trivialize your successes, scoff at your aspirations, or appear disinterested and unresponsive uh, to your struggles and challenges. This behavior is akin to a subtle psychological warfare by systematically undervaluing your achievements and aspirations. These individuals create an imbalance in the relationship. It's a calculated move to ensure that you remain in a position of self-doubt and diminished self-esteem, making you more susceptible to manipulation and control. In their eyes, your diminished self-worth elevates their status, solidifying their position of dominance in the relationship. Moreover, such disdainful remarks are often a reflection of their own insecurities and feelings of inadequacy. By belittling others, they attempt to mask their own vulnerabilities and project a facade of superiority. This behavior is a telltale sign of their inability to engage in healthy, supportive, and reciprocal relationships. Recognizing and understanding this pattern of behavior is crucial. It enables you to see through the veil of superficial charm that such individuals often wear, 
and to understand the underlying toxic dynamics of the relationship, it serves as a warning to either address the behavior with the individual, directly setting clear boundaries, or to distance oneself from such a toxic environment. Number 13. Unilateral. 13. Benefit. This can manifest in various facets of a relationship, be it financial, emotional, or practical financially. The user may frequently borrow money or resources with promises of repayment or reciprocity that never materialize emotionally. They might lean heavily on the other for support, validation, and attention, yet offer little to nothing in return. When the roles are reversed practically, they could habitually seek favors, assistance, or time, yet be conspicuously absent or too busy when their counterpart needs help. This one-sidedness is akin to a parasitic relationship in nature where one organism benefits at the expense of the other. The user, like a parasite, draws nourishment, in this case, emotional, financial, or practical support, without contributing equally or adequately to the well-being of their host over time. This lack of reciprocity can deplete the giver's resources, be they emotional, financial, or temporal, leaving them drained and unfulfilled. The motives behind unilateral benefit are often rooted in a deep-seated self-centeredness and a lack of empathy. The user views relationships through a transactional lens, assessing interactions based on what they stand to gain rather than what they can contribute. This approach to relationships is fundamentally flawed, as it overlooks the inherent value of mutual respect, support, and give and take. Identifying this pattern requires a discerning eye. It involves recognizing the persistent lack of reciprocity and the feeling of being perpetually short. Changed in the relationship, it calls for an honest assessment of whether the interactions leave you feeling valued and respected or used and undervalued. Number 12. Disregard for your needs or feelings. This pattern of behavior were 12. One's emotional landscape is consistently ignored or devalued, is akin to tending a garden, where only one flower is allowed to bloom. While the others are neglected in such interactions, the user's needs and desires are prioritized while yours are sidelined or dismiss their actions and words, become the shears that trim away at your emotional well-being, leaving you feeling undervalued and invisible in the relationship. This disregard can manifest in various forms. It might be evident in the way they routinely overlook your emotional needs, failing to provide support or understanding, in times when you are vulnerable or in need. It could be seen in their indifference to your opinions and choices where your voice is drowned out by their dominating narrative. They may neglect to acknowledge your achievements or, worse, minimize your struggles, making light of the issues that weigh heavily on you. Such behavior is not merely insensitive, it's a calculated neglect, a tool used to maintain an upper hand in the relationship by invalidating your feelings and needs. The user creates an environment where your self-worth is undermined, thereby making you more susceptible to their influence and control. It is a form of emotional manipulation, subtly executed, but with significant impact. This dynamic is particularly damaging because it strikes at the very core of one's emotional well-being the need to be heard, understood, and valued as fundamental. When these needs are repeatedly ignored, it can lead to a decline in self-esteem and a feeling of isolation even when you are in a seemingly active relationship to navigate such waters, it is essential to recognize the signs of emotional neglect. This awareness becomes a beacon guiding you away from relationships where your emotional well-being is at risk. It empowers you to seek connections where reciprocity, respect, and mutual care are the foundational pillars. Number 11. Emotional Manipulation It often starts insidiously. 11 with the manipulator presenting themselves as caring and attentive. However, this facade quickly morphs into a mechanism for inducing feelings of anxiety, inadequacy, or guilt in their target. They become adept at pushing emotional buttons, praising to elevate you when it suits their purpose, then sharply criticizing or undermining you. To create self-doubt and dependency, consider the analogy of a gardener and a delicate plant. A caring gardener nurtures providing just the right amount of water and sunlight. In contrast, the emotional manipulator, like a negligent gardener, alternates between overwatering and leaving the plant to wither in drought. They use emotional extremes to destabilize, creating an environment where the target becomes emotionally dependent, 
constantly seeking the manipulator's approval and validation to regain that initial sense of warmth. This manipulation often targets the very core of one's emotional well-being. They may trivialize your accomplishments or mag magnify your failures to keep you in a perpetual state of self-doubt. They might twist situations to make you feel guilty for normal actions, shifting the blame to ensure you are always the one apologizing in relationships where emotional manipulation is at play. The balance of power is always skewed. The manipulator holds the rein, deciding when to offer affection and when to withdraw it. Keeping their target off balance, this dynamic is not about mutual growth or support. It's about feeding the manipulator's needs at the expense of the other's emotional health. Identifying emotional manipulation requires a keen awareness of these dynamics. It involves recognizing the patterns of interaction, where one's feelings are consistently toyed with. It calls for introspection to understand how these interactions affect one's sense of self and emotional well-being. Number 10. Lack of Genuine Support Envision a ten tree in a vast forest. Ideally, it is supported by the surrounding trees and undergrowth receiving nutrients, shelter, and the companionship of a thriving ecosystem. Now imagine a tree standing alone in a barren landscape with no other flora to offer support or protection. This is akin to being in a relationship with someone who lacks genuine interest in your well-being. You stand alone, unsupported, your branches reaching out for a camaraderie that never comes in such relationships. Your goals, projects, and challenges are met with apathy or token gestures of support. This person may not long to your plans, offer a half-hearted good luck, or even verbalize support. But their actions or lack thereof speak louder when it comes to tangible assistance, meaningful advice, or even a listening ear during tough times. Their presence is conspicuously absent. Their help, if offered, tends to be superficial, more a matter of form than substance, and often evaporates when need. Most of the reason behind this lack of genuine support is rooted in their focus on self-interest, your successes or failures, your challenges or an interest only in sarves are of interest only in sewer, as they affect them or their goal. They view relationships through a transactional lens where emotional investment is calculated based on potential personal returns. This attitude creates an imbalance where one party continuously gives, be it effort care or resources while the other takes off in leaving. The giver feeling undervalued and unseen, recognizing this lack of genuine support is crucial in understanding the nature of your relationship with such an individual. It calls for an honest assessment of the reciprocity in your interactions identifying and addressing this lack of support is key to ensuring that you invest your time and energy in relationships that are nurturing, reciprocal, and genuinely supportive. Number 9 Constant 9 Competition Picture A game of chess where every move is calculated not just to advance one's position, but also to systematically undermine the opponent in a similar vein. A person who just wants to use, you will often treat your relationship as a strategic game. Each of your achievements, decisions, or even challenges becomes an opportunity for them to assert superiority. Whether it's overshadowing your professional successes, one-upping your personal accomplishments, or subtly undermining your decisions, their actions are driven by the need to stay ahead in this self-imposed competition. This constant competition manifests in various ways in a professional setting. They might attempt to outshine you in meetings or take credit for your ideas in personal relationships. They could downplay your experiences or achievements, often juxtaposing their own to appear more significant. Even in casual conversations, there's a palpable undercurrent of them trying to prove themselves better, smarter, or more successful. The root of this behavior lies in a deep-seated insecurity and a skewed perception of self-worth, where their value is measured not by their own merit but by being superior to others. This perspective turns every interaction into a zero-sum game, where for them to win someone else. In this case, you must lose. It's a mindset where mutual growth is overshadowed by the desire to outdo and overshadow. Engaging with someone who exhibits constant competition can be emotionally exhausting. It creates an environment of perpetual tension where genuine collaboration or support is replaced by rivalry. Your successes are not celebrated but viewed as challenges to their dominance. 
Your struggles are not met with empathy but seen as opportunities for them to gain an upper hand. Identifying and understanding this pattern is crucial. It helps in setting boundaries and recalibrating the relationship if possible to a more healthy and collaborative dynamic. It involves recognizing that the foundation of any constructive relationship is mutual respect and support. Not a relentless race for superiority number eight. Absence in eight critical moments. This pattern of behavior is reminiscent of a tree that provides shade only when, when the sun is gentle, but vanishes when the storm clouds. Gather in good times when the sailing is smooth. They are there basking in the shared light and possibly reaping the benefits of the relationship. However, when the tides turn, when challenges arise and when support is most needed, their presence dwindles. Leaving you to weather the storm alone, such individuals treat relationships as a convenience, a means to an end, where their involvement is weighed on a scale of personal benefit. Their support is superficial, extended only when it aligns with their interests or when there is something to gain in critical moments, be it a personal crisis, a professional setback, or emotional turmoil. Their absence is palpable. It's during these times when genuine support and empathy are most needed that their true priorities and lack of commitment to the relationship are starkly revealed. The impact of this behavior on the person who is let down can be profound. It breeds a sense of betrayal and disillusionment, chipping away at the trust and reliability. One thought was foundational to the relationship. It raises questions about the very nature of the bond and often leads to a reassessment of the individual's role and value in one's life. Understanding this pattern is essential in recognizing the nature of the relationship and the other person's true intentions. It requires acknowledging that consistent support, both in times of joy and in times of adversity, is a cornerstone of any meaningful relationship. The realization that someone is absent during your critical moments serves as a critical litmus test, helping to distinguish between those who are genuinely invested in your well-being and those who are in the relationship merely for their gain number number seven. Lack seven of reciprocity. Imagine a seesaw where one side is, laden with the weight of efforts, sacrifices, and commitments while the other side is featherlight. Devoid of equivalent contributions, this image apply, represents a relationship lacking reciprocity in such connections. You find yourself consistently investing time, energy, and emotions, striving to nurture and sustain the bond conversely. The other person's contributions are minimal, often tokenistic or entirely absent. This disparity and effort can manifest in various ways. It might be you always initiating communication and making plans, while their responses are lukewarm or noncommittal. It could be your continuous support and understanding, without receiving the same level of empathy or assistance when you need it. Even in sharing personal experiences and vulnerabilities, you might find yourself open and forthcoming whereas they remain guarded or disinterested. The reasons behind this lack of reciprocity are rooted in a self-centric approach to relationships for the user. The relationship is a convenience, a resource to be tapped into as needed, without the intention of a meaningful exchange. Their involvement is calculated and contingent on what benefits them. Disregarding the needs and feelings of the other person, this approach is contrary to the essence of healthy. Relationships which thrive on mutual give and take shared experiences and a balanced investment of emotional labor recognizing. The lack of reciprocity requires a mindful observation of the relationship's dynamics. It involves asking whether the efforts to sustain and grow the connection are mutually shared or disproportionately shouldered by you. It calls for an honest assessment of whether the relationship feels enriching or draining equal or skewed. Number six, gossip and breach of six, trust. This can be likened to a double-edged sword on one edge, the act of gossiping about others. Do you create a false sense of camaraderie and trust? It can appear as if they are confiding in you, drawing you into a seemingly exclusive circle of trust. However, the other edge of the sword is far more sinister. It involves the betrayal of your trust where the intimate or sensitive information you shared in confidence becomes fodder for their gossip with others. This betrayal is not just a violation of trust. It is a strategic move to erode your sense of security and privacy within the relationship. This conduct reveals a calculated disregard for the sanctity of personal information and a blatant disrespect for the boundaries of confidentiality.
The USA leverages gossip as a tool for social maneuvering, often positioning themselves as a nexus of information by disseminating and twisting information. They seek to manipulate perceptions, create alliances, or even SE discord all for their benefit. This behavior demonstrates a utilitarian approach to relationships where people are seen as means to an end, and confidential information, as currency, to be traded. The impact of such actions on the victim is multifaceted. It fosters an environment of mistrust and insecurity, undermining the very foundation of what could have been a supportive and trustworthy relationship. It can lead to social and emotional repercussions, as the misuse of personal information can damage reputations, relationships, and self-esteem. Identifying this pattern of behavior is crucial for safeguarding oneself against such relational predators. It involves being vigilant about how they speak of others in their absence and being cautious about the information shared with them, observing their respect for confidentiality and their propensity to engage in gossip can provide valuable insights into their character and intentions. Recognizing and addressing this pattern is fundamental to maintaining one's dignity and ensuring that personal boundaries are respected in all relations. Ships number five, select availability. You are five available, they are not selective availability. In such a context paints a picture of a one-sided relationship, akin to a phone line where only one party is always on call, you in this. Dynamic are perpetually ready to lend an ear, extend a hand, or offer support. Your calendar, your emotions, and your resources are open books, readily access, able to them in stark contrast. The other person's availability is as rare as a comet in the night sky, occasional, unpredictable, and always on their terms. This discrepancy and availability is not merely a matter of busy schedules or conflicting priorities, it is a deliberate choice, a strategic stance adopted by the user. Their unavailability serves a dual purpose. It maintains a distance convenient for them, and it places them in a position of control by limiting their availability. They create a dynamic where you are left wanting more, often feeling grateful for whatever time or attention they deign to offer in such relationships. Your efforts to connect or engage are frequently met with excuses, delays, or outright neglect. Your texts may go unanswered. Your calls on ret return to your needs unacknowledged when they do. Engage it often aligns with their needs or agenda, turning the relationship into a one-way street, where your role becomes that of a convenience rather than a valued partner. The emotional toll of this pattern can be significant. It breeds feelings of inadequacy as you begin to question the value of your contributions and your worth in the eyes of the other person. It creates an undercurrent of frustration and resentment born out of the real is that your efforts and availability are not reciprocated. Recognizing the pattern of selective availability is crucial. It involves stepping back and objectively assessing the balance of effort and availability in the relationship. It calls for an understanding that healthy relationships are built on mutual respect, effort, and presence. Number four, making you feel guilty. Envision a scenario where guilt, four, is like a puppeteer string tugging at the conscience of the benevolent leading them down a path. They might not willingly choose the person using, you knows how to pull these strings adeptly, tapping into your sense of responsibility, empathy, or fairness. They might frame requests in a way that refusal would make you seem uncaring or selfish. Alternatively, they might remind you of past favors or incidents, suggesting an UNSP spoken debt that you are now obligated to repay this tactic of inducing guilt is often subtle and insidious. It starts with small favors or concessions, gradually escalating to more significant demands over time. Your boundaries are eroded and your capacity to refuse diminishes, leaving you feeling trapped in a cycle of guilt and compliance. The other person's needs and wants take center stage, while your own are sidelined or entirely dismissed. The effectiveness of this tactic lies in its ability to tap into a fundamental aspect of human nature, the desire to be seen as good, helpful, and caring by making you feel guilty. The user distorts these virtues, turning them into levers of control. You find yourself doing things not out of genuine desire or mutual respect, but out of a sense of imposed obligation, often feeling resentful or drained. Recognizing when someone is using guilt to manipulate you is crucial for maintaining the integrity of your personal boundaries and emotional well-being. It involves being mindful of the emotional undercurrents in your interactions 
distinguishing between genuine requests for help and attempts to exploit your goodwill. It also requires the courage to question the motivations behind the requests and to assert your right to say no without feeling guilty. Identifying and addressing this manipulative tactic is essential for fostering healthier relationships based on mutual respect, genuine care and free choice rather than obligation and guilt. Number three, lack of personal three interest. Imagine a conversation as a two-way street bustling with the traffic of thoughts, experiences, and emotions flowing back and forth in a healthy relationship. This street is alive with the exchange of mutual interest and care. However, when dealing with someone who just wants to use you, this street turns into a one-way lane their stories and experiences drive the conversation. While attempts to steer the dialogue towards your life are often met with detours or dead ends, this lack of personal interest manifests in various forms. Conversations with such individuals often feel like monologues dressed as dialogues. They eagerly delve in into the minutiae of their daily lives, their challenges and triumphs, expecting your attention and empathy. Yet when the spotlight shifts towards you, their interest wanes they might respond with perfunctory nods, change the subject abruptly or show visible disinterest or impatience. Your problems and experiences, no matter how significant, seem to barely register on their radar of concern. This behavior is not merely a lack of, of social etiquette or an absence of conversational skills. It is a deliberate indication of their priorities and intentions. By dominating the conversation and disregarding your stories, they establish a dynamic where their needs, opinions, and life take precedence. It's a subtle form of egocentrism where the relationship revolves around their axis and your role is reduced to that of an audience or a sounding board. The impact of such interactions can be profoundly disheartening. It can lead to feelings of insignificance and frustration as the fundamental human need for recognition and understanding goes unmet over time. This imbalance can erode the foundation of the relationship, leaving you feeling more like an accessory to their life than an equal partner. Recognizing this lack of personal interest is crucial. It involves being aware of the dynamics of your interactions and acknowledging the emotional impact act these one-sided conversations have on you. It calls for an evaluation of whether the relationship is mutually enriching or draining. Identifying this imbalance paves the way for seeking more reciprocal and fulfilling relationships where your stories and experiences are valued and respected as much as theirs. Number two, superficial closeness. It can be likened to the shimmering surface of a lake. It reflects two. The image of depth and substance, but upon closer inspection, one finds it lacks the profundity it promises. In such interactions, the persons may mimic the behaviors of a close friend or a committed partner. They might engage in frequent communication, share laughs, and even partake in what seems like intimate conversations. However, this semblance of closeness never transcends into the realm of true depth. This lack of genuine commitment, man, manifests in various ways. You might notice that while they are quick to enjoy the benefits of the relationship, they are equally quick to distance themselves when it requires effort or sacrifice on their part. In times of need, their support is often flimsy or non-existent. They may be present for the joys and celebrations, but conspicuously absent during moments of struggle or vulnerability. Moreover, this superficial closeness often lacks the key elements of trust and reliability that underpin authentic relationships plans might be made. Only to be casually broken promises might be given, but seldom kept their participation. In the relationship is often on their terms, guided by convenience and self-interest. The motive behind this behavior is often to maintain a circle of contacts that can be called upon when needed without investing in the emotional labor that true relationship ships require. It's a strategy of keeping people close enough for utility but not close enough to demand reciprocal commitment. In a sense, it's a form of emotional hedging, reaping the benefits of closeness without the risk of real attachment or responsibility. Recognizing superficial closeness is crucial in understanding 